I started watercolor painting, I was completely overwhelmed with the amount of information and technical jargon covering the labels of my tubes. Sincerely, it felt like looking at an alien language. I then made the mistake of looking at another brand's labels and realized this is not exactly the same. This little series is all about how to read the tubes and decipher packaging. Many experienced watercolorists may be bored to tears, but this is more for young artists trying to learn the medium. Because believe it or not, I did not have one formal teacher sit down and break this information down for me. Especially in college, where my instructor sorta of glossed over the watercolors properties and what made watercolor paint good. I have decided to start with Schminke, since they are highly organized and well respected in the watercolor painting community. They lay out all of the information in a nice little brochure, link in the description, and there are tons of reviews available about the paints, including mine, which will be linked in the description. Let's go through the most obvious info first. Here are a half pan watercolor tube and a full pan of watercolor paint. Tubes and paints are organized a little different visually. I will point out where the same information is, so no matter which one you pick, you will always be able to figure out which paint works best for you. First and foremost, the logo for Schminke. Here is the product name, Ordem at Quell. Then here is the color name in multiple languages. This number is the paint product number, so you can reorder the same color you've used. Now, there is a number in a circle on the wrapper. For Schminke, this is the price group. The more pigments used, the more expensive the paint. The John Brilliant Dark has a two, so it will be more expensive than the Ochre Transparent, which has a one. And speaking of pigments, remember the quote from Romeo and Juliet, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet? Well, that is the truth when it comes to paint names. What one company may call rose bread might be magenta red in another. Names are subjective across the board, and as such, artists need to go by the pigments that are used. The color index names are the abbreviations that explain which pigment is used. Following this code comes a number that specifies the exact chemical compound present in that paint. Just so you know, there are way too many combinations for me to list them all. Look at the half pan wrapper drawn brilliant dark. According to the wrapper, it has pigments of white, yellow, and brown. The ochre transparent has only one pigment of yellow. This information is important when mixing your own colors or distinguishing colors under different names. For the next part, we need to start with the symbol key. Remember the little box that was on maps and they had little drawings for everything like mountains or railroads? Each brand of watercolor paint has a similar setup for their information. Let's be honest, some of the words are really long and it's much easier to communicate with a short little symbol. Schmieke uses a square to distinguish between their colors transparencies. There is also a little number at the end, and that tells how many of a particular transparency they have in a particular group. The drawn brilliant dark is an the drawn brilliant dark is an opaque color because it has the completely colored in square. And the ochre transparent is, well, transparent because it has an outline of a square. As you can see in the chart, there are also semi-transparent and semi-opaque symbols, so paint is not always transparent or opaque. Next, Schminke specifically calls out that its light fastness is based on the blue wool scale. I honestly did not know what that was, so I looked it up. A website called Hibiscus PLC says, The blue wool scale measures the performance of coloring dyes in light. Traditionally, this test was developed for the textile industry, but it was later adopted in the printing industry as a measure of light fastness for ink colorants. Light fastness tests 
using the blue wool scale as a reference are carried out using a xenon arc lamp as a light source. Light from the xenon lamp has the nearest artificial wavelength distribution to that of the sun. The blue wool scale with a range of 1 to 8 uses samples of wool dyed with 8 different blue pigments, each of which fade after different exposure times, 1 being the least and 8 being the highest. Schmincke uses stars to show how light fast an item is. On the left hand you can see the blue wool scale where it goes from 8 all the way to 1 and divides it up where their pigments stand accordingly. In the middle column of the chart, it shows the stars from 5 all the way to 1, and there is also a dash line for non light fast colors. It is very important to check the packaging to see what your brand is using for their key because it's not always the same. So let's look at the Drawn Brilliant Dark wrapper again, and it has 4 stars, which means it's mostly light fast. It's still pretty good, but Transparent Ochre has five stars, which is the highest for light fastness. And finally, for staining symbols, Schmincke uses triangles. Juan Brilliant Dark has half a triangle colored in, which means semi-staining. Ochre Transparent, on the other hand, has a completely dark triangle, which means staining. Hopefully this has been helpful. I want to do more brands in the future to show the differences and how to read other different labels. And if this is helpful to another artist, I'm always happy to do it. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you would like some art stencils to keep your watercolor journal or sketchbook organized, please come take a look on my Etsy. Thank you again for your support. Till next time.